Hi, I'm Phil Susan, and I am going to be starting to do a series of videos of bass playing tips and tricks, things that I've learnt over the years and I've been asked about many times. Um, I'm going to be doing a series of these videos. Uh, I'd like to do about one a week, but we'll see how that goes. Um, and they are really going to be um, focused on all aspects of, of playing the bass. Uh, initially I'm not really going to talk too much about what to play, I think that's up to you. Um, that's up to uh, you listening to music and developing your heart and soul. Um, but these are really practical tips and I keep getting asked for these things. So um, I'm hoping that each of these video videos will run probably between two and four minutes. They should be short and sweet um, and very important, I would love your comments. Uh, please feel free to ask questions. Um, I would like this to be an interaction uh, and I'd like to share anything uh, uh, that I may uh, uh, present here as well as answer any questions that you guys may have or that somebody may want to know about. Some of the stuff is going to be quite basic but I think it's all helpful and it's certainly just the way I do things. So um, having said that, I'm not, I want to move along and um, the first thing I want to, sh to talk about is I get asked about stringing basses. I know it's a, it's, it's a very mundane thing for most people, but if you're just starting out and you really want to know how to string a bass properly, I can show you what I do and see if this works for you. So this is a, 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 a Music Man um, American series Sterling Bass. It's, it's one of my favorite uh, workhorse basses that I use. I'm, I'm endorsed by Music Man. I have several of these. And uh, obviously, most bases are pretty similar. Um, I use Rotor Sound 66 swing bass strings. That's what I use. I love them. Um, I'm not saying that you can't use anything else, but this is what I'm endorsed by, so that's what I'm using. So the first thing we do is we want to take off the old strings. Um, I'm using a string winder. You can certainly use anything you want. Um, there's a debate whether it's safe to take all the strings off in one go or whether you should maintain the tension. I think honestly uh, most basses these days are fairly robust and sturdy and, and can withstand having the strings removed for a while. Uh, I certainly slacken off all the strings before I put the instrument on a plane anyway so that's not a big deal for me. So the first thing I want to do of course is I want to be able to take my strings off and I'll pop them right off. Um, let's see, oops, they should come right off. Now, the thing, the thing about um, these string posts is that um, I don't like to have too much of a winding on my string post. And the reason being that the more there is wound around the string post, the more there is to stretch uh, uh, to go out of tune. So I find that the optimal is about one maximum two turns around the post. I think that seems to work just fine. And in order to do so, I'm cutting my strings and on this particular base, it seems to equate to about a two to three inch string length past the actual post, the winding post. Um, and uh, we'll get to that in one second. Okay, so I've taken all my strings off and I'm about to put my new strings on. Um, of course, I've given the guitar a quick wipe down, which is always a good idea. Get the dust out from around the bridge and give a, a nice wipe down to the fingerboard. Um, you can even use a fingerboard conditioner oil if you like. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want to take one of my strings. In this case, this is the E string. and. Um, I'm going to unravel it. I like to do a check on my strings before I string them because it's, there are sometimes defective strings and the way that I do that is I run it over my thumb and I'm looking for any loose spots and this, has a, this string has a, a particularly even tension on it so I think this is good to go. The string goes through the back of the bridge bridge over the pier through it and like I said, I want to cut it about two to three inches um, away from the winding peg over here. Now, having done that, the string goes inside the peg and where it bends and catches onto the edge of the uh, winding post here uh, is really where it grips onto the string. 
And so I want to make sure that that bend is very firm. So I'm going to bend it flat down and bend it out. Now, sometimes I may have enough slack to be able to make a first wrap around, as indeed I have right here. Now this is very important. If you do that, please make sure that you free the string at the other end and let it unwind. Effectively what I've done is twist it round, and if I do not do that, I am forcing the string to want to unwind itself, and I'm not talking about this end, I'm talking about the, the, uh, the, 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 the winding of the string itself, so it wouldn't be good. So I'll now hold that down, and I'll start to tighten it around. Eventually, you can see that it's going to get the tension on there. And I just want to take up the slack, give me a bit of um, enough tension to hold it in place. And I'm going to put the other strings on in exactly the same way. So I've got these strings put on now, um, each has about two to three wraps around the um, winding post, and and get them almost up to pitch, and at this point there's a very important thing you need to do, which is to stretch the springs, uh, the strings. <laughs> you're stretching them because you you want to pull them tight onto the winding post, as well as to stretch the metal of the string uh, to the point where it reaches a good tension and it's not going to lose its tune um, at least too much in the first few times that you you you're playing. Um, and one way I've been doing this my whole life, it was explained to me by a physicist one time, and I don't really know the, uh, I don't want to go into the details of that because it's a little complex, but basically to stretch the strings at the nodes of the strings, which are the points at which you have harmonics. At the points where the harmonics occur, 12th fret, 7th fret, 5th fret, etc., the string, when it's playing the harmonic, doesn't move, it remains static, and the string on either side will move. And for some reason, um, stretching it at those points seems to retain the brightness and the full harmonics as well as being able to stretch the string and doesn't sound old. So I'll take the string at the 12th fret and I'll give it a, a nice firm stretch. Same thing at the 7th fret, same thing at the 5th fret. And I will do this for all of those strings right there. 7th and 5th, 12th, 7th and fifth. And then I'm going to tune the guitar up. You can hear that the guitar has now pitched itself down a little bit, obviously, with a stretch. And that's pretty close to where I want it to be. Um, I will then put a tuner onto the guitar and fine-tune it, but for the time being, this is pretty much where it needs to be and it's not really going to lose any tune when I play it. I can take this right on stage straight away and play it not worry too much. Um, strings can be a bit harsh, especially stainless steel and the classical violin trick is kind of gross but that's what I've been using my whole life as well. Classical violinists rub their fingers on the sides of their nose, believe it or not, and they will use that on their strings. You only have to do that once, and automatically your strings have a, a natural lubricated silkiness to them, and that takes the, the harsh and sharp edge off of them. Anyway, um, I do love to give lessons. I'm, unfortunately, or fortunately, I'm very busy. I don't have much time to give lessons these days. Um, but when I do give lessons, people are always asking me for tips and tricks, and that is precisely why I wanted to make these videos. They're going to be made all over the place, probably hotel rooms, and this is my kitchen. Um, but um, please, like my video, uh, join the channel, please follow it, subscribe to it, and um, do leave questions. Please leave questions and I'll attempt to answer them as best as I possibly can. Fantastic. Thanks for checking in. Please come to see uh, uh, my band Last In Line if we're playing around. And I will see you soon. Thank you.